Hello folks. <clears throat> it's been about a year since my last video on my Bulova watch collection and I thought I would give you an update on some of my more recent acquisitions. <clears throat> okay. Sorry about that. <clears throat> First one here is a 1930 Bulova President. This one's in really great shape. Really love this one. I got to stop saying that. I keep saying it, but look at that dial. Perfect. Beautiful crocodile strap. <clears throat> Very nice. <clears throat> Here we have a uh, 1931 Lone Eagle. Uh, <clears throat> did a pretty bad job of cutting the stem. <laughs> and... Uh, Actually, the dial is in pretty good shape on this one, too, but it's the color of the, the crystal. I don't actually have another Lone Eagle crystal. That one's yellowed. Um, here's one of my favorites, the 1931 Wanderin' Seconds President. <clears throat> so you see down where the traditional second hand is, it has a wander in seconds. So bull of a president 19, I think it's 31, pretty certain it's 31. <clears throat> it's got beautiful engraving on the back too. Dated 1932 LJM. <clears throat> Here we go. This is a ambassador, 1932, another great condition one. Yellow gold, rare for yellow gold during this time. Again, it's not real gold, it's a gold filled. Um, but uh, actually, it's a very heavy case. You'd think it was real gold, but <clears throat> very nice. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so, um, what does this say? <clears throat> 1931. Prentice. It's a pretty rare model. It's two-tone. Um, you just don't see this one very often at all. Uh, I can't uh, count. Uh, I think there's only one or two on my Bulova. This may be the only one, actually. I'm not 100% sure. <clears throat> Here's an old favorite, the uh, 1934 Senator. It's got that 10 a.m. movement, step side, arc deco, pretty cool, raunchy bracelet, but trust me, you have this many watches, you run out of bracelets. <laughs> so you use whatever you can find, like this white one, <laughs> lol. Um, this is a Bulova Senator, uh, 1934. I do have to say, the white gold case with the yellow Styles and num numbers I really like. <clears throat> this one's very unusual. This is the only one I've known, I've seen, I've documented of this particular model. Uh, it is classified on mybulova.com as an unknown. Uh, it's a gold filled, solid, uh, all cased, all yellow gold case, and it's a 1935. But I've been unable to find any similar watches like this one. <clears throat> and we have a 1934 Ranger. Again, really bad job cutting stems. Got to learn to do that better. Again, white gold case with the yellow hour markers and hands. Put on a blue strap, I think it looks really nice. Okay, a 1936 treasure. You remember from my last video of this period, I had a treasure. Uh, this is just another one, this is on a strap. Okay, this is a um, 1937 Bulova. President. And what makes this one unusual, this is the optional 14 karat gold case. So not engraved. 
on our original bracelet. And we go with the American Clipper 1938. Another original bracelet. Love when I can find original bracelets. And another terrible crown stem. I don't know, maybe they were made that way? Don't know, but that seems like a bigger enough gap that it shouldn't be there. Here's the old uh, Webster. Uh, looks like a Montgomery, but uh, the Webster had this black and silver dial. And this one is engraved on the back, which I like. And it says, to Charlie from Alphonse. Alphor, Alphor, Alphonse. And here's an interesting one, only because of the strap. It's a 1934 Montgomery. And yeah, I know, sorry, but I made the strap. This is one of my first attempts. Came out okay. <laughs> uh, not too good at sewing or stitching, I guess. And oh yeah, this one is uh, also signed to Keith Browning Whitney. Or, nope, not two, but Keith Browning Whitney. Here's a 1939 Ambassador. Again, you see here, this is not, whoop, not recessed. Um, Montgomery's, there's a little cutout there and it sets in. On the Ambassadors, they don't. And it looks to be not original, but a period bracelet. And we've got, uh, this is a pretty rare model. You don't see this very often at all. It is the 1940 Major, is it? 39. Mayor. It says Mayor, but I believe it is Major, not Mayor. It's got kind of almost like a uh, copper colored second register. And this is a beautiful watch. It is a 1939 American Clipper. This is the C variant with the black dial. Um, love the, the setup on this one. Again, gosh, the stems <laughs> and crowns, too much of a gap. But yeah, very nice mint condition dial and case for that matter. Now we go into the 40s. Here's a very attractive beacon, 1940 beacon. Um, just got the, I don't know if you can see a Roman gold dial with kind of copper hour track and Roman numeral um, hour markers. Here's an interesting looking one too. It's a Bulova, um Admiral, uh, 1940, looks to me like this should be a 1930s, but it is a 1940. It wasn't a very popular model. It didn't last very long, but gold filled like most of this period. It's pretty heavy too. Um, here's a unknown, thought it was a phantom, but Phantoms do not have second hands. This particular one has a second hand register and we don't have an ad that documents the Phantom case with a seconds register. So we classify this one as unknown. So anyone happens to find the ad, I'd love to find it. Uh, and also this has a stainless steel back and it's a little different shape, K shape. And a panthom, a phantom, phantom, excuse me. <clears throat> Here's a uh, chancellor from 1940. 
stainless back. By this time, we're talking approaching the World War II. They stopped doing brass plated backs. Eventually, they'll move to sterling silver plated because the steel was needed for the war effort. Here's a 1941 Nighthawk. Um, again, I've mentioned this before. These are tiny. Look at my thumbnail. Imagine your thumbnail. These things are 25 millimeters, maybe, maybe 24. Um, and this is radium dialed with hands and uh, got cathedral hands. And this was, these are heavily marketed, as you can tell, air warden to soldiers. <clears throat> this is another one. I showed you this in the earlier video. This is an officer. It's a 1941 officer. This one's got a little better condition bracelet, but still, these original bracelets are really hard to find. And they have a very unique setup. So it's, they're not that easy to interchange. Gonna go quick. So here's a 1941 Navigator with the black dial. Beautiful. Uh, 1942 Banker. Nice size. Gold fill back, so I guess it was a little higher end. Watch. Here's another unknown. Uh, case is common. I mean, we see this case all the time. Uh, we call it classify as a diver, uh, driver watch, and that's because you see it's hinged here. It's intended to be worn on the side of your wrist like this when you're driving so you don't have to turn your hand up. So very common around the 30s and 40s. Uh, lots of case makers make these, but this one is also engraved. Tim from the Boys, 1943. Really cool engraving. Here's one of my favorites. This is a rose gold unknown. It looks almost like the Commodore, except these lugs on a Commodore are more rounded and it doesn't have this little step um, base. Um, but basically, same as a Commodore. Unknown, I've not been able to find any um, ads or any confirmation of what model this is. Again, hopefully, you can find one and let me know. Um, here we go. This is a, what we call a practitioner. Uh, it's center second with applied hour markers. So uh, very small, again, little 25, probably millimeter, somewhere around there. These do run. Uh, glued hand, very nice. Um, this is the general, I believe. Uh, no, President E. 1942 President E. It's got the exploding numbers there in white. Um, not loomed. Um, thought this was an engraved too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this one is Valedictorian Robert K. German, um, 1944. Actually found this person online. He turned out to be after valedictorian working for the U.S. State Department and was second in charge at the Russia desk in Russia during the Cold War. Actually found a picture in his obituary of him wearing this watch. Very cool. <clears throat> Here's a really special and super rare watch. It's not running. I just got it in. It's a 1943 one-button chronograph. Unlike the regular ones that have the crown, this has the off, uh, the two o'clock pusher. Um, this is the only one I've ever seen with the um, dial in this configuration. Um, I believe this is a military grade. It's got the military, almost like an ordnance department. So could have been produced under contract, but absolutely a stunner. And then speaking of military, here's a regular 1944 ordnance department uh, watch. Really Good shape. Um, yeah, and then we got a 1944 officer. This is a new model shape for the name. 
And then I believe this is another 1945 officer, but this with the black dial. And rounding out the last two, uh, we've got the Senator, 1943. And let's see, yep. Sorry. 1945 Squadron B. Yeah, this was in a bottom of a bunch of junk watches. Actually, I didn't think I could restore it as well as I did. It was terrible condition. But I was able to get it running again. Not the best condition dial, but, you know, I'm glad to have it. And that's all of my recent acquisitions, I'd say, in the last year or so. Um, up to 1945, and most of these watches are from estate sales, yard sales, thrift stores, flea markets, friends that go to yard selling. A lot of them were cheap. A few of them I paid out for them, but most of them uh, were acquired at bad shape but very low cost. So I will do another video shortly. 